All right, well, I'm going to go ahead and kick this thing off. So welcome, everyone, to the kickoff event uh, for the Fall 2022 Intern Palooza panel on approaching your internship for success. My name is Taylor Swift. I promise my name is real. Uh, I am a policy advisor with Demand Progress and a member of the Intern Palooza Organizing Committee. Uh, so whether it's your first month, your first week, or you haven't started your internship yet, we have an amazing panel here to answer all of your questions about internships, what to expect, and how to make the most out of your experience. As a reminder, this is part of Internapalooza, which is a collaborative project between the members of the First Branch Intern Project in cooperation with the House Select Committee on the Modernization of Congress. I hope you're all having fun with the virtual resources that we've put together for you. And remember to sign up for our next webinar on networking and career planning, which will take place two weeks from today on September 9th at 12 p.m. Eastern. So with all of that out of the way, I'm very pleased to welcome our panelists. We have an amazing group here with experience interning and mentoring interns on both sides of the aisle, in both chambers, and in both committee and member personal offices. So you have a vast array of experience here. So make sure you have some questions ready. We'll have plenty of time at the end to make sure those get answered. And if you have any burning questions that you think kind of want to be answered in the meantime, go ahead and drop those in the Q&A feature on Zoom. So with that, I'm going to introduce our panelists. First, we have Bisher Martini, a staff assistant for Representative Jennifer Wexton and the president and founder of the Capitol Hill Intern Association, which you also definitely join. Uh, next, we have Katie Wallach, the legislative correspondent and former intern coordinator for Representative Ronnie Jackson. We also have Casey Lee, staff assistant for the House Judiciary Committee, who started her Hill career as a fellow in Representative Ted Liu's office through Apex. Next, we have Spencer McKee, a sophomore at George Washington University studying international affairs and a recent summer 2022 intern for the House Select Committee on the Modernization of Congress. And finally, we have Brianna, excuse me, Bree Shauna Walker, a recent graduate of North Central College with a degree in political science and is a newly hired staff assistant in the Biden-Harris administration's Office of Presidential Personnel. She's also a three-time, count them, three-time congressional interns with stints in Representative Kasten's district office, Senator Duckworth's DC office, and Representative Lauren Underwood's DC office with the Congressional Black Caucus Foundation. So now that you know all of our panelists and you know a little bit about what this event's about, we're going to get into some questions. So I'm going to start with Brashana and Spencer, so who have both just completed their summer internships. Brashana, I'm going to start with you if that's okay. So in your most uh, recent internship, what stood out to you most in that first few weeks when you were navigating Congress? Um, well, since I had only previously worked on like the Senate side, um, just always noticing differences between the House and the Senate. And also, I think like the season. So like we were there in the summer, which is a lot less busy than it is in fall when I entered in the Senate. So um, just looking at the differences um, of different things. But I also think it's really cool because um, especially on the House side, you have a smaller constituency. So your focus is more on like issues that are important and like more localized to constituents. Rep Underwood is actually like my home representative. So it was really cool to work on um, issues that matter to my family and friends and community that the Congresswoman was always working on. So I think it was just very rewarding in that way. Yeah, that is um, super, super interesting and insightful. Spencer, I'm going to ask you the same question. So what stood out to you most in your first few weeks when you were trying to navigate the institution? Yeah, so immediately what stood out to me navigating Congress was quite literally navigating Congress. Um, this place is really confusing. <laughs> but joking aside, I, I quickly found that Congress is pretty much the only workplace where before you even start your job, everyone starts telling you how horrible it is and like what a horrible place it is to work. Um, instead, you know, I really saw a huge learning opportunity um, and, you know, the opportunity to absorb all the knowledge that I could. So I would say like, don't be afraid to ask to go to hearings that pique your interest, talk to people in your office, reach out to others outside of your office that are doing things that you aspire to. Um, and remember that like now you work for Congress and have the opportunity to talk to those people who told you how horrible Congress is. <laughs> um, 
you know, if you work for a committee, talk about the good things that your committee is doing. If you work for a member office, remember you're re representing that office and often the first line of communication for someone, you know, on the outside that thinks that of Congress. So, you know, just remember how important your interactions are and, and give people a reason to have faith in Congress, because I think there are, are a lot of good people here. And I didn't realize that. Yeah, that is a great, great answer. And honestly, that kind of leads into my my second question. So I'm going to go back to Rashana on this one. When you were thinking back to your very first internship, was there anything you wish that you had known earlier or done differently in your first few weeks? Um, never be afraid to ask for more work. Like there's always more work to be done. So if you want to do more or if you don't really know much about a subject, but you want to learn more, um, it's totally okay, like with the permission of your staff system to reach out to the LA or the LC that works on those um, issue portfolios so you can um, learn more because they do recognize that it's a learning experience and they want you to leave like not just like you want to become so much of an expert on things that you already knew about. It's so much cooler when you um, ask questions and get to learn more about things that you maybe never even um, thought about before. So just saying like, I don't know, I, would always tell, I wish I could go back and tell my younger self, just like, don't be timid in asking for more assignments or if you can help with more things because A, there's always more work to be done and B, it just makes you better. Yeah, that um, honestly makes a lot of sense. And um, as someone who was a former intern and a former staffer, when interns would come to me asking for more work, it it's a positive in, in both ways and that it helps uh, alleviate my bandwidth. But then also, like you mentioned, it shows like tons of initiative on your side, which then will help you be more memorable um, potentially when your internship ends and you're trying to look for what's next. So Spencer, I'm going to go back to you. Is there, um, is there anything that you can think of that you wish you knew earlier in, you know, or wanted to do differently in those first couple of weeks? Yeah, so I think DC and the Hill specifically are, it's a very interesting place to work because it heavily relies on networking and participation in like the large social scene. Um, I think when you're a student and an intern, like people not only want to see you succeed, but they want to help you succeed. Uh, so, and, and your time on the Hill, it's up really quickly. Like you don't realize it, but it flies by. So I would say like immediately, I wish that I would have taken advantage of the networking opportunities. Uh, to speak with people like with common interests. Um, someone on my staff, for example, sent me a list of alum from GW uh, from like Bloomberg government, I think. And I, I looked through that list and found people that had worked on committees where I had interests. And you'd really be surprised with like the return response rate is from sending a cold email and asking someone to speak. Uh, and to add on to that, like make sure that whenever you're speaking to someone, come prepared with questions. And also make sure that you stay in contact with those people and follow up. Yeah, that is um, honestly fantastic, fantastic advice. I completely agree. Um, Brashana, I'm going to come back to you. So, you know, we mentioned in the opening that you've really had a full scope of the pot of just like every possible internship opportunity, you know, in Congress. Can you kind of talk about the differences between working in a district office versus like DC? Like what are the biggest differences for you? Um, well, definitely in the district office, it's more um, constituency based. I would say like, it's what are the needs of the constituents? Like how are we helping them? Those kinds of things. Um, in Representative Kasson's office, um, it was also virtual for me during the district office internship just because of the nature of the world at that time. But um, so I think it was a little less hands on, but we tried to make the most of it. So it was like a lot of research based. I was a legislative and research intern. So I really enjoyed those kinds of things. And then um, was also following um, George Floyd and like all of those things. And so getting to um, have ideas for town halls or different things, conversations that um, the representative wanted to use for the community. I think that was really cool. It's, it felt very community based and I really enjoyed that. But um, the DC office, whereas in like Representative Underwood's office, all of our constituent um, casework and things like that is all managed through our district offices. So we don't have as much um, interaction with constituents, but we have a lot more interaction with like actual legislation. So I think that those are like two of the bigger differences. And I think um, in Senator Duckworth's office, you feel like you have a little bit of both of those things. Like you're answering the constituent phone calls, but you're working on um, certain legislative portfolios and different things like that. So I think 
think um yeah they all have like little differences but I think the work still feels very similar like once you learn how to answer phone calls or one office you can see how they differ um based on like where you're located um obviously like the senator's office has a wider scope of people calling um which is so different and then just like the nature of like the districts that they live in and different things like that like people love representative underwood they're like I'm here calling about how amazing she, I was like, whoa, this is so nice compared to like some other calls that you get are like more or less challenging in other offices. So I think, um, I don't know, just a little different intricacies, but I think that some of that is based on who the member is, but then also um, just like the nature of the environment. Yeah, those are um, honestly super helpful tips to understand the differences, especially for those, you know, uh, participants and, and viewers that are potentially still looking to what kind of internship they want to do. So to piggyback, I'm going to go back to you, Brashana, really quickly. Could you just expand on the differences between being in Rep Underwood's office on the House side and then working for Senator Duckworth on the Senate and kind of like what the biggest differences were there as well? Um, I definitely think in the House office, you have the greater opportunity to become um you have the greater opportunity to like focus on things more broadly in different um, portfolios and interest areas. Whereas in Senator Duckworth's office, we had 10 interns. And so like eight of us are legislative, we're all working on different portfolios. So I was on education, veterans affairs and uh, national service. Whereas in um, Representative Underwood's office, it was kind of whatever I was really interested in, I could go for because they have less people. So there's more work to be done, which I think is really cool. So I do say like, my like little pro tip, I'm like, if you wanna become a subject matter expert, Senate is like for you. And if you wanna become a general, like more of a general expert and like learn a lot of things then the house is for you. And so sometimes I do wish that I interned in the house first and then the Senate, but I do think that both experiences were insanely insightful. Super, super valuable advice for those listening. I could not more. Um, Spencer, we're going to hop back to you and then we're going to turn it over to the staff. So this will be the last question for you, Spencer, right now. Uh, you obviously, you know, took an internship on a committee. So kind of talk to us about what stood out the most um, for what you did and then kind of the role that interns play with committees. Yeah, so I worked on the modernization committee. So basically it's a bicarbonate bipartisan committee with six Democrats, six Republicans, uh, unlike usual where you have like the Democrat side and the Republicans, Republican side and the budget gets split, we just had one staff. And so that meant that on the same staff, we had Republicans and Democrats. So on a daily basis, I was collaborating with people on both sides of the aisle. And that meant that I had to listen to ideas that sometimes I didn't particularly agree with. But I learned very quickly how important it, important it is to keep an open mind. Um, I, I think people, and you know, you all are here working for Congress because they want to serve people and because they love people. So I think that it's really important to try and make sure that as many people as possible have a seat at the table. And that was something that I learned very quickly. It was, you know, always checking in on recommendations and ensuring that they didn't favor one side of the aisle or the other, because we're just in general trying to make things better. Um, so, you know, I, I think, I don't really know, like from a member office perspective, what's different, but for my committee, you know, I really felt like a member of of the team, which was amazing, but it also meant that I had a lot of personal responsibility. So my internship experience was driven and created by me. You know, I, I could have gotten away with maybe sitting there and twiddling my thumbs and not doing much um, when days were slow or, you know, taking initiative and asking for more projects or, you know, coming up with ideas. So, you know, what Brashana talked about, uh, which was a really great point. So I think in the end, like you are responsible for how much you get out of this experience. I'm sensing a theme that all of the listeners and viewers should definitely take notes on is that having that drive um, so that when those opportunities present themselves, I think is going to really help separate you from all of the other interns. So definitely take note on that. And for those who are wondering, um, 
what in the heck is the select committee on the modernization of congress it's i it's probably a should have given a little overview <laughs> okay it's okay it's a committee that like no one outside of working in congress really knows so no maybe one. if you could just give like a little yes. background on kind of what they are absolutely, how they, absolutely. How they differ. um and a funny point is so i participated in intern palooza for summer 2022 and my staff director spoke and they said who knows what the modernization committee is and me and the other intern with me, we raised our hands, maybe two other people. Oh, some people, mm, half of them are ours, right? It doesn't count. <laughs> um, but yeah, so the, the Modernization Committee, you know, like I said, six Democrats, six Republicans. We have one committee staff who are from both sides of the aisle. Um, we, you know, the, the committee issues recommendations on a wide range of things within Congress that need improvement. So the committee doesn't have the power to like legislate, um, but those recommendations then are presented to all the committee members twice a year where they vote on them. And, you know, in order to foster like that bipartisan spirit, they require a supermajority of eight out of 12 yeses from members um, to pass. Uh, so yeah, that's, that's a little overview. <laughs> Shameless plug, they are an incredible committee. They are the most efficient, the most bipartisan, the most cooperative committee that you've quite frankly never heard of. So I know I see Anne has dropped some more information about the committee in the chat. For those interested, I highly recommend checking it out because they do some incredible work that, to be honest, doesn't get the credit that it deserves. So thanks, Spencer, for that uh, background. And we're going to now switch to uh, the staff who have joined us to interact. So we're going to talk to Katie, Casey, and Bisher. Uh, Katie, I'm going to start with you first. So what surprises interns the most as they start on the Hill? So I actually talk about interns, you know, fairly regularly because I've interacted with them a whole lot and I ask this question all the time. And two of the things I get the most often are, one, the general age of the office. I think especially on the House side, everyone tends to be a lot younger. And so that is really surprising, especially college interns who walk in and go, you look like you're three years older than me, which is possible. <laughs> and then another thing that's um, really surprising is the busyness of the office versus the very quiet moments. It, Congress, when we're in session versus out of session and the different cycles, are, it can be very confusing and kind of a hectic work environment and they have 20 things to do one minute and then you're working on one project completely the next so kind of getting used to that cyclical nature of congress is is surprising it's definitely a bit of a learning curve but they're thankful for it in the end it kind of was trial by fire for sure absolutely um casey i know that you're on a committee now could you kind of add to this yeah, um, other things that might surprise interns are the number of resources that are at your disposal once you're in Congress. There are so many different articles and um, things you could read about to first off, like learn what the process is in Congress, like what is the legislative process. Um, hopefully you all are about to or have taken the CRS training to orient yourselves, but there are other um, resources on CRS and as well as uh, Congressional Staff Academy. Um, so make sure you talk to your intern coordinators about how you can best absorb all these amazing, um, you know, sites of information to get the most out of your internship. Definitely, definitely. Um, big plus one from me on CRS. They have helped me countless times, both as an intern as an, and as a staffer, just rock stars over there definitely get to know their website and their office, definitely. So, Bisher, do you have anything to add on um, kind of what surprises interns the most when they start? Yeah, sure. So, uh, kind of like Katie was saying, it, it always surprises interns, I think, just like how inconsistent and fast-paced everything is on the Hill. Um, you know, I, I feel like Congress is actively finding new ways to streamline, like, important information, but at the end of the day, you essentially have like 435 startups, at least on the House side, um, not including like all the committee offices, just all operating with their own like personalities. Um, and on top of that, you know, just the, the difference you're going to be experiencing between session and non-session weeks. Um, I think Katie was made a few excellent points on that. Definitely. And I will shamelessly plug um, the select committee on the modernization of congress continues to try to examine the congressional calendar and how to fix the chaotic in session out of session schedule um obviously there's been this new thing within this session called committee work weeks that was a recommendation that actually came out of the select committee of the modernization of congress so just another thing that 
the committee that no one's heard about is doing to try to make Congress more efficient and more collaborative. So Katie, I'm going to come back to you for the next question. Uh, what do you wish all interns knew before walking into your office? So two main things. So one, I think, especially intern coordinators, but also the staff in general, we understand the learning curve. I would say probably 80% of whatever office you're walking into is made up of former interns. So we know that there's a learning curve and that's okay. So please do not expect to be perfect day one, week one, or frankly, even month one, and keep asking those questions. And because we want, we are investing, we as staff are investing time in you for to not only grow with you personally to try to like hone your skills, but also to, it helps the office, the better our interns are. So that's one. And then two, if this is an individual that y'all can do. So learning about the member before you get here. Understand some of the viewpoints. Of course, you're not going to understand all of them, but go through Twitter, go through Facebook, go through the member's website, and they have the, their, their tabs there about what their positions and stances are. You should absolutely know what committees your members are on. So when you walk in day one, you already have some research done and that way we can help you grow that knowledge and figure out what you're interested in a little bit but and, and how you align with the member i think those two things will definitely give you a head start absolutely could not agree more uh essential essential casey i'm going to hand it to you yeah, um, so for the Judiciary Committee, a lot of the interns are working directly with lawyers, the chief counsels of each of the subcommittees. And so um, the expectations are you're going to hit the ground running with policy memos and legal research. And while that very well will happen, it will take time to build that trust to get there. So one of the things I'd like to remind interns is it does take time to build trust with your superiors. Just take everything you can, all the assignments, and you know run with them um, and let the work product speak for themselves before you ask eagerly for more. And of course, it's really important to be proactive, but um, there is a certain you know balance to being proactive, but also respectful and um, you know not too um, over eager. So um, that would be one thing I'd add is building trust with your peers takes time. And the second thing is try to come in with a couple goals in mind, whether they're short term or long term, uh, while you're interning on the Hill. Um, maybe you want to write some talking points for your member, or maybe you want to help with a memo for a markup. Uh, these are like different examples of ways you can kind of plug in in addition to all the other uh, duties and hats you'll wear at the office. I 100% agree. Um, Bisher, do you have anything to add? Uh, kind of what you wish all of your interns knew before walking into your office? Yeah. Um, so I, I think one thing that is often kind of lost in translation is uh, just the importance of understanding Hill culture and like there, like that there absolutely is a culture on the Hill and there is like a tacit set of rules that for some reason, I mean, your intern coordinator may or may not tell you about, but uh, there are objective, like right things to do and wrong things to do. Like, uh, I don't know, for example, I, I think at least the vast majority of offices are gonna value an intern that's, um, you know, just very positive about the work that they're doing and they're not willing to like, um, like they don't seem less excited to shred papers than they are to write a policy memo, for example. Yeah, actually, uh, to that point, my very first day of my very first internship, I spent three hours fixing a printer and it sucked, but I felt so accomplished when I finally figured it out. And it just, like you said, it helped me earn that trust day one on just the basic things of feeling proud of the work that I did, no matter how small of a task it was. So um, to that point, I'm going to go back to Casey really quick on this one. What, um, you know, what makes an intern really stand out for you uh, on the committee side? Yeah, um, I think to add to Fisher's um, wonderful insight, having a can-do attitude, especially for a committee where 
a lot of the issues you cover is very controversial and heated. You do need like a sense of humor. So just having that presence that you bring into the office that can brighten everyone's mood. Um, I would also, but add a caveat to that, you should try to match as well the vibe of the office that you're at too, um, just to make sure that uh, you're maintaining professionalism, but as well, you're bringing like a, a positive can-do attitude when you are working that just helps everyone's um, moods brighten up. Um, and I think also for the committee side, um, for Judiciary Committee, we have five different subcommittees. Um, I would, in each, in our structure for our interns, each intern is assigned to one. I would very much recommend reaching out to do coffee chats with folks outside of your subcommittee or outside of your team to learn about their work and maybe learn about something that you become interested in and how everyone's journeys are all over the place. No, there's no one, like, one path to success, especially on the Hill. Um, and it's really cool. You get to hear some really interesting stories um, from senior staff to comms people. Um, so yeah, that would be my kind of two pieces of advice for a committee uh, intern. Great advice. Um, Katie, do you have anything that you feel helps interns stand out for your office? Yes. So I think there's like three main things for our office. Um, and I'm going to be I'll totally show my bias as the LC. So I write all day. But I know I speak for the LAs in the office too. Strong writing skills really do stand out because I read work every day. And I've seen horrible writing and I've seen phenomenal writing. And in terms that even if the information is not necessarily correct, but if I can see the point that they're trying to communicate, I'm really excited to work with them so they can really hone in those skills. So I think writing skills, number one, and then also completing tasks in a timely and a thoughtful manner. If a member of staff assigns you something and they give you a deadline, meet it. It, it might seem arbitrary to you, but there's a reason why a staffer is giving you that timeline. And don't complete it like you're completing a rushed school assignment. Actually put in thought, put in effort. That way you learn more and can get more out of it. And then a third one, which might seem kind of silly, is reception skills. You guys are the front line of the office, whether that be when visitors come, whether meetings come, constituents come for tours, or if you're answering phones, you guys are the face of our office. And so being able to communicate enthusiastically, even with callers that aren't so fun or not so nice, but having that attitude is really, really important. And we notice those kinds of things. Man, all of this advice and all of these best practices are so insightful. I really hope that the participants on, on here are taking notes because these are some things that I wish I knew going into my internship. So Bisher, do you have anything to add kind of what stands out for interns in your office? Yeah, so I actually just wrote like a whole sheet on this for, for Chia. So I'm just going to pull out a few really quick points. But uh, I, I very much agree with uh, Casey on like maintaining a positive attitude. It's it's such like an underrated but valuable quality because, I mean, at the end of the day, like Hill staffers talk, right? And, and word spreads on the Hill. And even if you're doing the work that's assigned to you, but maybe you're like not being super communicative with your supervisor, like, you know, you leave their team's messages on red, right? Or I don't know, you're just, um, you're not feeling super exuberant about the work that you're doing. Um, like word does spread. And if, you know, that's just the unfortunate truth and your, rep your, your reputation precedes you. So it's, it's really important to like remain just uh, exuberant about the work that you're doing. Um, also for writing, like if, if you don't have good writing skills or if you just like, you're not too good with grammar, use Grammarly. So, like get make sure your tenses are in order um and uh let's see yeah I, I would just say even like in those periods where like you don't have too much work to do still really try to utilize that time like during non-session weeks even during like recess right now if you've already started um i, I don't remember who mentioned this earlier but like read up on your member as much as possible, uh, do some research, like read, I don't know, like five press releases, five constituent letters, um, go through the website, do as much research as you can. So uh, that when the time comes, um, if you ever have to like take a meeting or something for your member and you're asked the question, like what are your members' priorities? You know how to answer that question. 
I definitely agree. So uh, Bisher just mentioned this briefly in one of his points, but Katie, I'm going to go back to you for this question. You know, it's it's safe to say, like, no matter what the office, uh, intern coordinators are the first and best resource for interns as they're like navigating through their experience. So can you share any advice for interns on how to work well with uh, intern coordinators in their office? Definitely. So I was an intern coordinator. It's a little bit of background on me for about six months in our office. I started May of last year and I um, did, I think, three or four rounds of um, intern hirings. Um, and I passed along to our staff assistant now. So every intern coordinator is going to be a little bit different, their personalities and how they like to structure things. So just kind of like an advisory, <laughs> um, everyone's going to be different. But for me, when I was working with interns and I see it now, um, Thoughtful questions are way to your intern coordinator's heart. If you can, if it's very, it's very clear whether your question is frivolous or whether you actually put in thought, then I try to answer your own question first. Um, so, when, and then also knowing your timings. So like for our office, our staff assistant is not only the intern coordinator, but our boss's driver. And so I had an intern one time ask me a question I was walk as I was walking out the door not the right time or place. <laughs> so finding a lull and finding that opportunity to be able to ask the question, that's something that's really important. And that also signals to your intern coordinator, like, oh, they're actually interested and they are seeking more information. So that's point one. And I think point two is being able to take criticism, constructive and sometimes otherwise. So whenever you're given so you're getting, whether it be feedback on an assignment, whether it be feedback on a constituent interaction, being able to look at those pointers objectively and then acting on it. Because just hearing it is one thing, but actually putting it into your work next time is something totally different. And as intern coordinators and as you know, other staffers, we can pick up on improvement. And we are so excited when that happens. And that just really encourage, it's really encouraging for us on our side. And then we want to give you more things. So knowing when to ask thoughtful, insightful questions and then using feedback. Absolutely. Um, I remember during one of my first internships and Katie, uh, you can correct me if this is something you do as well, but I was always taught that if you have a couple of those really critical questions to kind of bring them as like a batch, right? You You bring maybe three or four questions instead of just coming with one question over and over and over again, because I was told like, as an intern, staffers only have so much bandwidth and time. So if you're constantly coming every 10, 15, 20 minutes to ask a question, like that's exhausting for the staffer. It takes them out of whatever they're doing. So coming, you know, with a batch of questions rather than just individual questions was something that definitely uh, I was taught. And I, I think it could be valuable for the folks on this call as well. No, definitely. Yeah. Great, great. So I'm um, Casey, I'm going to turn to you. So I know, um, you know, Spencer talked about her experiences a bit um, on the committee. So from a staff assistant's perspective, how can how can um, interns work with staff assistants on the committee level? Yeah, um, again, as I mentioned earlier, like for our, at least for our committee, um, there are various different assignments from like writing legal research memos to um, any kind of uh, talking points for like the chairman or something like that. Um, but there's also some of the grunt work such as <laughs> fixing a printer on your first day. Um, so I think for the Judiciary Committee, um, we really do value team players. Um, everything you do is integral to the committee or integral to your office. Like don't diminish any of the assignments that you are assigned. It's all it's all contributing to the success of your member or your office. Um, so just wanting to double tap on that point. Um, and I think when there are lulls, um, for example, recesses right now, um, in addition to doing research on your member, if you're in a committee, um, I would recommend as boring as it may sound, watching past hearings and markups to understand 
what's going on. Um, there's a lot of jargon that gets thrown around, especially in a markup, um, and just getting a sense of how it flows, um, what are opportunities where you can have a future idea for another project. So for example, if the opposite side is submitting amendments, oh, maybe in the next markup that your subcommittee is doing, you can have some ideas of amendments that the opposite side might bring up and that you can have um, you know, talking points to uh, reply back to that. So that's an example of how to come up creatively with ideas is just literally, you know, going on our website, watching through past like videos, press releases, even letters that we write to different um, agencies as well. And also another thing you can do is poke around in the shared drive of your office. There's a lot of, hopefully if staff has done their work, um, documentation of everything uh, that they've done in the past, um, even Congresses, that you can see, oh, these are all the correspondences that we've received. These are all the different memos we've written before. And then you can see not only um, substantively what has been done in the past, but stylistically too, like formatting really does matter when you're writing some of these more higher level documents is just making sure you're um, complying with like what's expected and what's normal uh, when you're writing, when you get to write assigned, uh, when you get to write the assigned memos and stuff. So uh, those are my kind of tips for, um, the committee level. Yeah, those are all extremely helpful and insightful tips. Um, I just want to, before we, we keep going forward with questions, um, you know, for those on watching, uh, the Q and A will start here in a couple of minutes. So, you know, start to think about questions you want to ask our panelists, um, but then also feel free to drop them in the Q and A here on Zoom. So we can, we can start going through those and selecting some as well. But, you know, Bisher, I'm going to come back to you. Um, Sometimes other interns or even like recent former interns can be, you know, resources for each other. Either they become friends or, you know, they they help with best practices and stuff like that, especially if they're in different offices or even in the same office. So, you know, can you tell us a little bit about the uh, the Capitol Hill Intern Association? Sure. Uh, thanks, Taylor. So, yeah, I mean, just to give you guys like a really quick background, uh, totally just started as a way of making friends back in the spring of 2021 when I was an intern. Um, and then it slowly grew, more people, uh, more interns wanted to join the group. And uh, turns out a lot of people want to make friends, especially when you're in a city that maybe you're not from and you're there for three months uh, working in Congress. So uh, yeah, and uh, we're, we are an official congressional staff organization. Um, each semester we get anywhere from like 500 to 600 members. Um, we usually have like a Teams group chat and also a uh, like outside of Teams group chat. So maybe like GroupMe or Telegram. Um, we have uh, a listserv that uh, we use to advertise uh, events, which usually is, um, I mean, most of our events are like networking events. So whether it's at like a park or some bar um, for like a happy hour. Um, our events are usually pretty big and get like a hundred plus people joining us. Um, and it's just like a really great way to, uh, you know, whether you want to make friends or just meet people um, that, I don't know, you just like making more connections on the Hill in general. And also we have like resource meetings. Um, we have like we've did uh, photography events in the past, like free professional headshots. Uh, so our, our job is just to like help you guys um, as much as possible, um, really just to like help you utilize your internship to the full extent while you're here. Because, um, you know, as uh, uh, Spencer was saying earlier, like the time really does go by and uh, it's really important that you like utilize this time to meet other people and just extend yourself as much as possible. Absolutely. So, um, Bisher, could you just let everybody on the call know um, kind of how to join if they're starting their internship? Sure. Um, so I'm going to plug our Instagram shamelessly uh, in the chat right now. And uh, on there, you can just, uh, you know, uh, go on our Instagram page, click on the link tree link in the bio. And then there you'll see like a Google form that you can fill out, just like put your name, email, etc. And then all the information will uh, come through that way and we can like send you an invite to the group chat and uh, let you know about our like first event this semester coming up. Great. Awesome. Um, 
So we've kind of had, at least over the past couple of minutes, we've been talking a lot about like resources and capacity for what not only you all as staffers or former interns do, but interns themselves, right? Um, I know it's really hard because like Fisher mentioned, there are so many individual offices. We have two different chambers. It's hard to have, you know, those best practices line up. And one of the things that our organization at Demand Progress has been doing is advocating for the creation for what is known as a house intern resource office. And actually this panel couldn't have come at a more perfect time because yesterday um, I had the privilege to publish an op-ed that I just dropped in the chat uh, with Habiba Mohammed of Pay Our Interns, um, basically talking about this issue, right? Congress doesn't track their intern demographic data. They don't track intake. They don't, um, as an institution, outreach to colleges or HBCUs or non-traditional students. And so, you know, I kind of wanted to pose the question to the group, either of, of any of you can, can kind of go first. Um, you know, would this be something either as a staffer, as an intern coordinator, or as an intern, something that you think would be a valuable resource for the institution? Not everybody at once. So I don't know if I can necessarily, like, so basically, you know, you uh, preach the Select Committee on Modernization. So, um, you know, one thing that also is missing on Capitol Hill is like, you mentioned pay our interns, right? Very recently, we weren't paying our interns. Some interns still aren't paid. Um, so even with like doing like stipends, like it doesn't cover housing costs here in DC. Uh, so that's super important. And, and also just as an intern, like, Capitol Hill is a very intimidating place. You can't navigate it directionally or, you know, through work or anything like that. So I think just somewhere that you could go for resources in general, uh, the committee, you know, made a recommendation or spoke about a recommendation, you know, to create like an intern resource office. Uh, so I would just say in general, like interns need more resources. It, it shouldn't be so difficult to figure out how to navigate this. Yeah, one hundred percent. And and this this article um, talks about how that's you know been a discussion of the the committee amongst other you know organizations and interns. Rashana, I saw that you went off mute. If you want to expand on this, yeah, I was going to say um, Spencer really hit the nail on the head. Um, I feel like um, so a lot of the reason that at first I didn't even apply to come to DC because like the cost is so um, uh, it's so expensive to be there, and so like I was like lucky and I think that also we should uh, push about the um, the foundations and organizations the resources that um, will provide housing like the Congressional Black Caucus Foundation um, the internship program comes with housing um, and a stipend and things like that and so that made it way more accessible and so I think things like that should be um, highlighted and more well known um, so that interns know that there are other resources out there to help um, the cost, and I think that especially um, in Senator Duckworth's office, I worked on um, diversity, equity, and inclusion initiatives, and like the big issue, especially with trying to hire more diversity within interns, is people. It's inequitable access to the institutions because everyone can't afford to live in D.C. And it's so even if you can afford like to live in D.C., then it's like I can't afford to not get paid or working. So it's like you, you can make money, but you also might not have enough to pay rent. And I think that um, so those definitely need to be um, challenges that Congress is intentional about continuously overcoming. Oh, you're 100% correct. Um, my first internship all the way back when was completely unpaid. I remember I worked three jobs to save up. You all probably have similar stories. Luckily, um, the Subcommittee on Appropriations that focuses on this has actually done a pretty phenomenal job raising intern pay, but there's still a long way to go. And to all of your points about bandwidth and outreach, um, especially to connect with students that haven't traditionally had the opportunity to come to the Hill, I think that is just so vitally important to create that strong pipeline. Um, because we need a representative Congress, not only at the member level, but then, of course, at the staff level. So um, I think now we can kind of pivot to, um, 
let's see some some questions if people want to start asking some questions in the chat i see one is in here um i will start with there is always a feeling of being overwhelmed when coming into an internship or a new job what is the best advice to get rid of those first day jitters um katie i'm going to start with you Sure. I remember my first day, even though I was an intern twice over before I started my position here, I remember answering phone, the phone for the first time and getting into the office for the first time. Just I was nervous. I didn't know I didn't want to make a fool of myself. I didn't want to say something wrong to a constituent and on behalf of the member. Um, so I was, it's, it, it is nerve wracking. And I think it's a bit, it, it, it's okay to be like that for a little while. Um, but when you first get here, how to get over those jitters, I think first of all, breathe. It's okay. You are not the first intern to, to be in your office or at Capitol Hill, and you will not be the last. Um, and again, and I think understanding that your office is probably full of former interns. You all started it more or less. You have to start somewhere. An internship is a phenomenal position you to, to get in. And once you're here, it's like you've almost made it. Your, the access that you're going to have as an intern, being able to jump to a different office or to a committee or to really anywhere you want to be, it's a springboard. So it's okay to be nervous, but balance that with excitement. Know that you're here to make a difference and to make a change. And so I think if you can utilize your nervous energy to turn it into excitement and readiness, I think will really help you. Yeah, that's a great answer. Does anybody else have anything to add? Yeah, I'll, I'll add in really quickly. Um, you know, I think that's something that at least when I was interning didn't, wasn't just like my first day, but like my entire internship, because I'm like, the, like the imposter syndrome was real. Um, I, I don't know, I had a really hard time getting over it. But um, I think one thing that especially helped me when I, when I became like a staff assistant was just um, knowing that, I mean, like, I, or just really reminding myself that I belong here, um, that plenty of other people applied for my position, but they, they picked me for a reason. Um, and like almost exactly like Katie was saying, kind of like really utilizing that energy, like that nervous, anxious energy and redirecting it towards just working as hard as I can uh, to really prove to myself that, hey, there's no reason that I don't belong here. Uh, I can prove that through my work. I can prove that through my personality. Um, and I, you know, I deserve to be here. So it's very well said, Bishar. Bishan, I saw you had your hand up. Um, yes, I was going to say that feeling like it's like always like in the back of your head. And I just think that um, what one of my mentors told me is like, just do it scared anyway. Like everyone is scared. Like no one wants to mess up because what we know is like the things that we're doing affects people's lives. And I think that like, when I think of it, I think about like the people that I'm helping is more important than like the fear that I'm feeling like I'm not good enough. Like if I was good enough to be put in the position, then I need to be focused on like helping them and not um, worrying about like if I'm good enough or things like that. So just taking the space to be like, yes, I'm nervous, but we can do it anyway. And then also I was going to mention um, affinity groups. So I know like um, we have like Congressional Black Associates and the Women's Congressional Staff Association and things like that. And those are open to interns. And um, you can really find community in those spaces. And I think that um, or like the tri caucus and different things like that. And so going to those and just expressing your feelings to people who were literally once in your shoes um, definitely proved to be a big asset to my internship experience and grow my personal um, friendships and networks, but also like professionally as well, because they've been there before. They want to see you excel and they really do try and help. Absolutely. Um, Spencer, I see you have your hand up as well. Yeah, so basically just going off of like what everyone else says, you know, I think with some of like that imposter syndrome also comes like uncertainty. I would say like never be afraid to ask questions. You're in an office with people who have been interns before and they get it uh, and your success is their success. So, so don't be afraid to ask questions. And, you know, I would say with like constituent calls, um, you know, I worked in a member office for one day for our chair, <laughs> but some really helpful advice that I was given is, you know, just to listen, right? Like, these people are calling you for a reason. You're probably their last resort. And that's a big responsibility to have. Um, but it's also an amazing privilege and opportunity. So I would say just, just listen on those phone calls. You know, I think everyone 
on phone calls or in conversations, they're always thinking about their next move, what to say next, listen to what that person is saying, allow them to vent, understand where they're coming from first. Yeah, that is, that is fantastic advice. And, um, I'm going to move on to the, to the next question. So, um, I guess, let's see, Casey, will go to you for this one. What do you think the, uh, the best way to make connections and build relationships as an intern are? Yeah, um, I think you should, you know, I, I wish I was told this when I first started at the Hill, but like, you should definitely try doing your coffee chats early on so that, you know, you can hit people like multiple times throughout your internship to develop a true, honest, genuine relationship with someone versus like, oh, it's about to end and I need a job now. So I'm going to reach out to this person for the first time. I think you should really do your research into who you should you know, want to reach out to. And not only that, um, learn about like their journey, like looked at, look at their LinkedIn, come with prepared questions about their different experiences so that, you know, the other person on the side of the table can actually give like specific answers to your questions. And it shows that you're really curious about them as a person and not as like a stepping stone to your next uh, career move. So like, be prepared for your, be prepared for your coffee chats. Do them early and develop those relationships over time. I think Rashana brought up a, like the affinity staff associations. Like those are amazing resources. Um, as someone who uh, came in as a uh, APEX fellow, I found a lot of community with the Congressional uh, Asian Pacific American Staff Association. So look for other staff associations that interest you or fit in with your identity. I think there's like a long list of them. Um, and yeah, feel free to reach out to them. And of course, Fisher and the Capitol Hill Intern Association would be amazing resources as well as I imagine. Yeah, that that is great advice. I was also going to plug uh, the Capitol Hill Intern Association for Bisher as well. And then I mentioned this at the top, for, but for those um, who don't remember, uh, next two weeks from now, the September 9th, we're also having a webinar on networking as well. So make sure that you attend that to to kind of go into like a deeper dive into this issue because it's definitely something that's super important uh, if you want to not only intern on Capitol Hill, but potentially have a job as well. So I see we have a few more questions in the Q&A. Uh, this one's actually for Bushana. Uh, can you talk about your new position with the Biden administration and you know, to piggyback off that, how your internships um, kind of led you to that route? Um, yes. So, yeah, I'm literally going to be running off this call in five minutes. But um, I am a staff assistant in the Office of Presidential Personnel with the Biden-Harris administration. I am so excited. It's really cool um, work that I get to do. Um, this has to be for domestic agency personnel, which basically means Whatever President Biden wants to appoint people to the agencies and things like that, we help vet, recruit, and um, make sure that these are good candidates for these positions. Um, and so I actually, CBCF really helped um, put me in the right rooms to meet the right people to be applying for a job like this. Um, we had a panel at the White House during my internship, and it was um, a panel of CB, of, like the panelists were all CBCF alums that now work with the administration. And so we were able to ask questions and do different things. And so um, we met someone who was a CBCF alum and uh, I just asked to have coffee with them and ask different questions. And then there's also um, another alum of my cohort who also works um, at the White House in the Office of Management and Administration, I wanna say. And so it's just been really cool to see. Um, but what's really awesome is the Biden-Harris administration is making a true effort at um, making um, at making its staffers and the government like look like America. And so I really think that it's been really cool to um, be a part of that and like taking part in. Um, you see a lot more diversity like record levels, um, and so they're, they've been keeping track of that as well. And I think that that has been really cool. Um, I can't speak much about the job just yet. I just started, but it's really busy. Um, if you want to work really hard and do some really cool stuff, I definitely say that you can find a spot in the administration. But I think that I like will always have like this really soft spot for Congress because I just think it's so awesome because I aspire to be like a professor. So like I'll be running Congress simulations like for like 40 years of my life and loving it. So I think um, those kinds of things. But yes, I really do love the uh, 
position that I'm in, and I'm happy to share my email or contact if anyone wants to chat offline. Awesome. Super helpful, Roshana. Um, so I know we're coming down um, on our time now, so I have enough for one more question. Um, I know there are folks on the panel that have done one internship, multiple internships. So I guess the question I can pose to anyone and, and feel free to answer, or I'm going to call on someone. Um, is it helpful to do multiple Hill internships to land a job on the Hill or is one enough? So I'll jump into it if that's okay. Um, it really depends on the person. So I have well, one of my former interns who's in our office. She was in three different offices just because she started when she was a semester, she, uh, a sophomore in college, and she had the opportunity to come up three different times. Um, and that was a phenomenal resource for her because she worked in both chambers and she ended up in the Senate side, uh, much to my dismay. Um, but she, um, she really valued and treasured all of those internships. But I've known some people, um, uh, the, our staff is in our office. He started out as an intern. He was with us for less than two months before my chief and the congressman said he needs to be on our staff full time. So it really depends on where you are in your career and where you are in life. If you're on the younger side, you're still, you know, have a couple more years left of college, maybe do a couple internships if this is what you know you want to do. But if you are someone who you get to the hill and go, ooh, not for me, that's totally fine but use the relationships that you make on the Hill to maybe springboard into an agency or springboard into even a lobbying firm. I mean, we can help you with those different connections. Uh, Casey? Yeah, I think it's possible to get a job after your first internship, but like don't constrain yourself to only just working on the Hill. There are so many other organizations and things you could do afterwards. Um, I personally came from like a campaign background experience. And then there's actually like some fellowships that would give you like ledge aid or um, kind of ledge correspondent level experience. And you can kind of springboard off of that without going through multiple Hill internships. Um, I feel like there's also grad school if you're if you're one of those people. Um, you can always enter the Hill as a, a current grad student. Uh, at Judiciary Committee, there are law students who are starting fall internships next week. So, you know, uh, there's multiple different pathways to get you onto the Hill as a full-time job, but just, you know, enjoy your time here. Dave by day it's going to be amazing and yeah just uh, have have fun working here and interning here awesome so as as we wrap up uh we're going to do a quick lightning round answer for our panelists so the question is what is your one best piece of advice for interns as they get started we're going to start with spencer oh pressure's on <laughs> Um, you know, I would say that, like, for me, I tried to, like, never forget where I was. Um, and there was always, like, a moment every single day where I, I pinched myself. Uh, we had, like, weekly staff meetings where everyone would talk about what the week looked like, but also, like, bounce around ideas. And I tried to never forget that, as cheesy as it sounds, you're living in history right now. And, you know, you could be in, like, the room where it happens. Um, so never take that for granted. Excellent answer. Katie? So um, I would say focus on what you can do today. When you come into the office, you have several hours to make a difference in someone's life or to do research. Um, so I think really using every day while you're here, whether to go get coffee, whether to complete a research assignment, whether to help out, some, help out a constituent, use every day wisely. Great. Prashana? Um, I also um, wanted to say, uh, I learned this a lot, I think, during all the course of my internships. Um, as much as you can, like, network up and, like, you want to build your network, I definitely think that you should take advantage of, like, networking across. I, like, anytime I saw another intern badge in the hallway, I would always say hi and ask what offices they were from and things like that because you have this unique experience an opportunity to grow your network exponentially with young people who will be the future leaders, will be the future members and things like that. And so just making sure that you um, are not so like laser focused on like meeting people who can help you out with the job right away because you never know who you're gonna know next to you um, in the future. And yeah, like my Duckworth internship, like they're like my family and so is my CBCF cohort. And I think that that's really cool because now we're at a point where like, 
now I have jobs and like different things like that. I can flag their um, resumes for different things. And so it's just really cool to have those genuine connections with people who are your friends and can speak to your work probably better than sometimes the supervisors and different things like that. 100% agree, uh, Rishana. Um, Bisher? <clears throat> Yeah, um, to kind of piggyback off of what Brishana was saying, um, don't treat networking like networking, treat networking like making friends, honestly. Uh, really, like, even there, there are like so many events um, uh, for just staffers and interns. Like, they're like, I don't know, they're like hiking events or sporting events. Um, that's where you actually will find, like, even if you're very singularly focused on you know improving your career that's the way to go about it is like make build genuine connections make genuine friends um and it'll also just make your time in dc a lot easier oh, i completely agree um i see casey has moved so uh we're gonna go to her for the last answer yes um i think take time after at the end of every day to reflect on what you really enjoyed about your internship what assignments excited you what didn't excite you and that can really inform what you know your next idea of what you want to do next um it might not be ledge stuff it might be comms it might be scheduling uh just take time to interrogate those feel feelings you felt maybe you hate picking up the phones maybe you love it maybe you love writing letters um just make take time for yourself to um you know interrogate and uh, think about what excites you about working on the hill or maybe the hill isn't right for you and that's fine too um just yeah take time for self-reflection perfect uh Bishra, i saw your hand do you want to add something or are you good yeah no just to add something really quickly also like really uh you know if you do end up wanting to work on the hill uh, really do your research and make sure that that specific office is a good fit for you um you know if you're looking for a particular job, let's say you really want to go the ledge route, but like you only find a press assistant job, like don't be afraid to say no, right? Really, like you're not a beggar, and you know you, it's not a beggar's can't be chooser situation. Like have a little bit of uh, trust in the process and and continue looking for the job that you really want. I completely agree as well. So, um, you know. All, all the people watching, I, I hope you all can say through your screen, you know, thanks so much to all of our wonderful panelists. I hope everybody was able to take away some incredible advice. Um, like I mentioned at the top, I wish I had some of these resources when I was going through these experiences that you all are about to go through. So, um, you know, this is going to be something that is recorded. So if you want to go back to it and watch it again, take more notes, um, it'll be available soon. So, with that, um, remember to sign up for the next webinar, which I mentioned is September 9th, two weeks from now at 12 p.m. And then also the final reception, which will be in person on September 16th in the Congressional Visitor Center. If you run into any issues or have any questions about Internal Palooza, you can send those to info at popvox.org. So thanks again to our panelists and good luck to everyone in their internships. Thanks so much. Bye, everyone.